Hey everybody, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slow going right now. I need to go, I'm making tea. You know, I gotta get ready, I gotta make tea. But let me know how I sound, how everything is going on your end. I will be on in just a second. We got a pretty fun live stream today. Well, we'll talk about it in a second. I just, I'm so excited to show you guys the new background. I mean, it's not like that new, but, but you, well, okay. Well, anyhow, you'll get it in a sec. I'll be on in a sec. Let me know how I sound. Uh, let me know how the music is, if it's too quiet or too loud or whatever. See you in a sec. All right, let's get rocking and rolling. Ready? I know there's nothing really new yet here. I know, but there will be in a sec. Well, let's talk about it in a second. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. I hope you guys had a wonderful 2022. I know I did. It was a long year for me, like one of the most. I mean, I'll talk about it a lot during the stream, but it was just thing after thing. I moved, I got engaged. <sighs> I mean, those are the really the big ones. Club Crochet, we made so many patterns last year. It was just one heck of a year. I'm excited that it's 2023, but I'm also excited. Uh, I, I, I am also going to miss 2022, you know what I mean? I don't know. It was it was a good year for me because it was just so many things happened. Yeah. But anyhow, today we are going to take a look back at 2022, all the patterns that we made, and then we're going to crochet one of them, obviously. And we're going to do something fancy pants to this background, which I think you guys are going to like. Uh, oh my gosh, Normal Gecko, you beat me to the punch. Hold on, I need to explain things first. But thank you so much, you beat Cooper. Oh my gosh. I don't know if Cooper's gonna be happy about that, but we'll find out. <laughs> Video quality is low. Is that the same for everybody? G says that video quality is low. Let me know if that's the same for everybody or not. I, I you know, I didn't get a haircut. I just, I just took a shower for the first time in my life. And so my hair's wet. No, I, not the first time in my life. I've taken, an, I've taken two showers before. 
just been a few years. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm goofy. I'm feeling goofy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Let's tilt this down just a little bit. And let's start by looking at this background. Oh, wait, you can't really see it that well. Why don't we switch it to my new camera that I made just for this? Well, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Let's do our hands first. Okay, sorry, sorry. I didn't prep this mentally as much as I usually do. Let's start by looking at our background and look at all, these aren't even all the patterns that we made this year. These are a majority of them, but not all of them. Look at how many patterns. There's so many. There's so many the last year. It's crazy. When I was thinking about it all, I was like, like I was putting it all together. Oh, the stream is still low quality. Is it low quality? Let's see, wait. Let's see, let's see. It could be an internet issue from my side because it is raining here. It is. It was pouring a few seconds ago. But yeah, sorry about the, oh, and we gotta change, oh my gosh, I didn't even change this thing. God, I, oh. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta change this. Hummingbird, because that's what we're making today. Based on your guys' vote. Okay, 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 hold on. Hold on, I just gotta move, just gotta scoot this over. Okay, okay. Sorry. Look at all the patterns we made last year. It's crazy, right? There's so many, there was just so many. G says nostalgia for the Corgi. That was their first project you started crocheting in 2022. Wow, that's amazing. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I am having a hard time choosing which one of these patterns were my absolute favorite. I think I had favorites here and there for different reasons. Jimbo wants to say hi really quick. Hold on. Oh, let's say hi to Jimbo because he demands everyone's attention. Say hi. Oh, you just want to be held. Okay. He just wants to be held. So we're going to hold on to him while we talk. Okay. There you go. He's like a little baby. Uh, I think my favorite pattern from last year, as far as like the design goes, was my Raptor pattern. This one right here. I think this one was my favorite one because it was just such a condensed and clean pattern. I just really, really was proud of it. I just think it's really cool. But that is like barely, it was barely my favorite project because some of them, what, what do you want? Do you want to go or do you want to stay? I'm having a very difficult time doing this with you here. Can you hear him pur purring? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to kick you out, bud. I can't do this with you, but you can come back and say hi again later. Okay, sorry about that. Woo! Sorry. I'll have him say hi again in a little bit. But I can't talk, I, it's just, you know, too many things going on at once, too many things. Okay, so last year was crazy. We made so many different patterns. I think my favorite one that I designed was the Raptor because of, like I said, it's just a very condensed pattern. And it's just, I just put a lot of thought and effort into every single stitch in that pattern. It's really small, but it's really cool. As far as like my favorite thing that I made though, like visually, I think my favorite might be sunshine back here, my giant sunflower one, which we're gonna talk about in just a second also. But God, I'm just, I'm really proud of last year. I think I think we really kicked butt. And I'm really excited to see, uh, for you guys to see what, what I got in plan for this year, but we're not gonna talk about that that much in this video. We're gonna be mostly focusing on last time uber shiny i'm shiny why am i so shiny someone says that i'm shiny louis the small camera where you are standing has a bright glow or a lighting problem you know what i messed with the lighting it's probably my fault i'll fix it i'll have to fix it later unfortunately um okay but today i had you guys vote on which pattern you wanted me to crochet today you chose the hummingbird. That was people's favorite pattern last year, which is crazy because that was like one of the most recent patterns that I did. I think we came out with that in what, November? So that's a pretty fresh pattern, uh, but it'll be really fun to crochet. We haven't, I don't think we've done it on a live stream before, a hummingbird. Uh, but before we get going there, 
I want to show you guys some cool stuff. I want to talk about how you can support this channel, of course. Show you guys some cool stuff and clean this up so we can get going, but we also need to clean up the background. So first off, let me talk about how you can support this channel if you want to. If you like what's going on here, you want to support this channel, the best way, like and subscribe down below. It's a really easy, cheap way to support this channel. If you want to support monetarily, the absolute best way is with the Club Crochet membership. Members get early access to future patterns, access to the full library. I'll talk more about what's coming in the library soon, but that's a really great way to support. Another great way, we have merch and kits in the store. We also have, you can also tip. That's right, you can tip the show and we're gonna do something very special for tipping today. So let me show you the really cool thing that I've been working on. God, I'm such a dingus. I didn't know the audio went out. Okay, hold on, hold on. I didn't realize that I didn't have the audio. There we go. Wait, did I forget the background audio too? Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay, let me explain that again. So, look at this cool background thing that I made. It's awesome, right? So, first off, we wanna say, Quick thank you to everybody that has supported last year. Look at our beautiful shelf of support. It's so cool. I just did a video of it all so I can post it on YouTube after this, but this was everyone that was supporting last year was extremely just awesome and I just really appreciate it. But this year, we're gonna freshen it up. We're gonna clean this all out right now, put it all away. I took a video so I could say thank you to everybody and, and obviously, huh. Now is my chance. Wait, right here. There we go. Hi. Hey. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to everybody that has supported. I really appreciate you. But this year we're gonna do something a little different. So first off, we're gonna clean this out. So quick thank you to if if you if you see something that you supported for, give it a shout out. I just really appreciate everybody that supported. I think like ten of these are from Cooper, to be honest. No question there. The Garfunkel, we got Chuckles here. We got Yancey, Tom, the Yeti. Thank you for your support. We got Sunshine, of course. I think this was the first support. And again, like I was saying, this is, I think, my favorite thing that I made last year. It's so cool. So cool. We got our big llama, Leonidas, the Pikmin. Pikmin patterns are coming out this year. We got Granny the Goblin. Uh, I don't remember what we named this little hummingbird rat thing. This was from uh, Cosmo, who actually crocheted it for me. Thank you, Cosmo. We, oh, this was actually the first one. Freddy the Dragon. That was support from, I think, Cooper. We got, I think this guy's name was Wompert. A beautiful hobgoblin and then a bugbear. All right, great. It's cleaned out. Okay, so here's how this works, guys. Let's clean this out too. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna have someone else explain this for me. Hey, everybody. That's right, I'm here and I'm here to stay. You can't get rid of me, never. That's right. 
I am here to explain this thing, but I kind of, I, Louis already kind of explained it, but I'll explain it a little bit better. So here's how this is going to work this year. We are going to be getting donations throughout the year, hopefully, maybe, I don't know. I hope so. If you support for $10 or more, I mean up to 25, I'm going to add, well, that guy is going to add something to this shelf right here. Now, eventually, Louie's going to get a tree made, I think out of metal. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. We're going to get a tree made out of metal. I'm going to have my dad help me, and then I'm going to crochet around it. Yeah. And then every time someone donates, we're going to add either a burb or a bonimal to the tree. Now, for today, if you donate for that much, I'm just going to add something to this background right there on that shelf. But later on, we're gonna add things to trees. Now, if you support for 25 or more, that's, I know that's a lot. We're gonna add something to this beautiful shelf over here. And at the end of the year, we're gonna have a beautiful scene. Louis is making some grass to go on the bottom of it so it looks really cute. Maybe we'll have a tea party. Who knows? It depends on what gets donated throughout the year. But it's gonna be a lot, I'm sure, right? Right? Maybe. I don't know. And lastly, if you are crazy and you want to support for a buttload of money, you will be added to the Cubes of Glory. Ah, that would be great. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wow, that would be so wonderful. Great. Wow. Okay, so that's how it works. I'm going to eat your money now. Okay, thanks. Bye. Wait, wait, wait. You forgot. You got to eat Cooper's and... Uh the uh and the normal gecko's money you forgot about that okay okay real quick just gonna go ahead and just... mm. thank you so much can you add something to the background for me sure thing can do can do jackery jackery daiquiri doc okay cooper and gecko Thank you so much for your support. Now, do you guys want to go, do you guys want to put that together to add the first thing to the shelf? Or do you want to add two things to the tree that, the invisible tree that's not here yet? You let me know. Um, I think it's going to eat me poor. <laughs> uh, let me know, Cooper and Gecko, if you guys want to go together, because I know you guys are partners. If you want to go together, I will add stuff to the back to the set for you, but if you want to put them as separate, we'll add two things to the invisible tree that's not here yet. You let me know. But the great thing is, the great thing is, we can switch back and forth whenever we want. Whenever we want. Okay, now we need to clear out this backdrop. I have a different bag for everything that goes, that was made here. So we're just gonna put all this into another bag, except for a hummingbird, to get ready for our crochet today. Laura, you know what? It's time for a midnight snack, if you ask me. I say cereal. Cereal's always a great midnight snack. Okay, so we got this cleaned out now. We got that cleaned out. Great, look at that. We're fresh. We are fresh for the new year. How beautiful. Look at this. I'm so curious to see what this is all gonna look like by the end of the year. Also, look how cool it's on screen. Isn't that neat? I just think that's so cool. I'm just really proud of this thing, okay? of the camera stuff there. And then I also have good idea, look at this, look at this. Okay, so down here, here's my idea for down here. I'm gonna do a wall of pegs with like little, um, you know like, you know when you go into like a, a store and they've got like a wall of like holes but then they got little like things that stick out of the holes? They're like, well anyhow, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna have yarn balls. It's just gonna be covered in my yarn so that way if we ever need yarn throughout the videos, I can just go boop and pull a yarn ball off. I gotta work on that, but you know, the first step is thinking of the idea and then the next step is actually making it. Okay. Now, let's get our yarn for what we're crocheting today. Look, I already got it all prepared. Look how cute that is too. Okay. Oopsies. There we go. I think we should make them separate. Oh, wait, wait. I dropped the mag, no I didn't. I dropped it. Darn you, needle. There we go. 
Okay. Whew. Okay. The pattern for today is for the hummingbird. I thought it was available right out the gets. Is it not? Oh my God, Sunshine's making a bunch of gnomes this year. That's awesome. Okay, well, anyhow, let's put up two things for a normal gecko and Cooper. I think what we're gonna do is for our very first one, for you a normal gecko, I'm gonna add a burb. I think that's a good idea to start us off for the year. Do you have a burb in mind? Let me know. If you have a specific burb in mind, I will choose one or I will choose one at random. I'm thinking a great start of this year for our first donation, we should do our rainbow owl because I don't know, there's just something about this that, that tells me it's gonna be good luck for the year. Do you feel that way, a normal gecko? If you do, let me know. You can also name our rainbow owl for the year. Okay, you think about it. You are welcome to think about it. You can change your mind, you can do whatever you want. You think about it, you let me know when you're ready. Same thing with you, Cooper. If you guys have ideas on what you want in the background, think about it, let me know. Okay. In the meantime. Oh, look at that, you set an owl, perfect. All right, so we're just gonna put your owl right here for right now, and then it'll be the first thing on our tree when we have our tree. Um, okay, I'll make the hummingbird available for free right now, too, for you, G. One second. Flash. Hummingbird. I'll make it free just for for the live stream so that you can crochet along with us, too. Okay, it'll just take me a second. Okay, but if you do want to crochet along with me, here are the materials that you're gonna need. Uh, the first thing is you're gonna need yarn. Now I'm gonna be using all cotton worst right yarn. You know my dealio. That's the kind of yarn that I like to use from I'm and Gurumi if I can. Specifically, we're gonna be using our like light blue, kind of like it's kind of like cyan, cyan for our main body color. Okay, hold on. Hold on, this is for... Okay, give the pattern a shot now. It should be completely free now. At clubcrochet.com slash hummingbird. Uh, Cooper, if you can put a link in the chat, go for it. Uh, it's totally free now, the pattern, the hummingbird pattern, so you can crochet along with me. Okay, so we're gonna need cyan for the main color. We'll need a little bit, this is actually m way more than we're gonna need. We'll need that for the head of the burb part itself. We'll need uh, a little bit of red. This is gonna be for the like chest of our hummingbird. We'll of course need some black. That's gonna be for our beak and our feet and the burb beak underneath. We'll need some safety eyes. Obviously, you know the dealio. We're gonna be using size six millimeter safety eyes, bottle eyes, available in the shop. There we go. And... Captain Amazing loves gnomes. Gnomes coming soon. Uh, I will, I'll talk about coming soon patterns uh, in just a second as well. You'll need a pipe cleaner, that's gonna be for the beak. You'll need a crochet hook, I'm gonna be using a size G. There we go, G, four millimeter crochet hook for this video. Then also, if you want some super strong mini magnets, I think we'll only need three, and that's gonna be for the butt of our hummingbird so that it can perch on our tree once we have our beautiful tree. Okay. That was a crazy long intro. 30 minutes for an intro, ugh. I'll tell you what, someone asked me what the goal is for next year, what, what some club crochet goals are for next year. One big one is shorten these intros. I wanna get them concise, because I wanna get crocheting ASAP, ASAP, yeah. All right, so we're gonna start with our wings, and we're gonna start chatting up the chat. Hi, everybody. 
How are you guys? How has your year been? What was your favorite thing about 2022? What, what, what did you do? What did you, what did you do? Okay, give the hummingbird pattern a shot too if you haven't yet. Let me know if you if you can see it. Um, I think it's available. Yeah, I just logged. I just went on my uh, my my iPad to open it, and it totally opened. It's it's looking good to me. A maze feed is gonna crochet a long pigeon. We might make a long hummingbird today. Who knows? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start by uh, making our wings and yeah. Okay, so next year, this or 2023, what are we doing this year? Okay, so I got some big, big plans this year, but the, my big plans aren't going to be started until about like April. And I'm not really ready to share how exactly it's going to work, but... I do have some really big ideas that I really think you guys are going to like. Um, this week, I'm going to start emailing everybody that was a Club Crochet Pro member, aka a, had a kit membership, um, to get their advice. Uh, because I have this like really big idea that I'm going to launch in April, but I really want some feedback on the people that were kit memberships before to see if to make sure that this is all uh, what they're going to like. I really think it is the, what they're going to like, but... Yeah, so if you were a kit membership, if you did have a kit membership before, um, uh, before we had to cancel it, I will, you should hear from me this week or next, uh, and I'm going to ask for your help. I'm going to be doing some meetings throughout uh, January and February with kit membership members to uh, get their feedback. So, yeah. Uh, that's one big thing, but obviously, like I said, I'm not ready to share to share too much info about that yet. What I am ready to share is uh, the few things that we have been doing on the website. Some new patterns that I've been working on for January and February, one of which should be coming out on Saturday. I just finished recording it yesterday, which is why this background is red. And look at that. We got a wing done. While I was saying all that, put the wing right here. Um, so, uh, patterns coming out soon. So I have been working on finishing up any of the patterns that were in the rough drafts. Uh, I turn, I turned. Um, I'm turning off the rough drafts. I'm going to change the rough drafts to be instead of rough drafts, we're going to call them preview patterns. Um, but they're basically going to act exactly like rough drafts were acting before, where it's going to, I need feedback on future patterns. They're unfinished patterns, but um, you can, you can check them out early and give me feedback if you have a membership. Last year, maybe even two years ago, actually, you know, time, what even is time? A few years ago, uh, we had a, some new patterns added to that to those rough drafts that have been just like germinating uh, throughout 2022. And it's finally time to finish them up and put them in the library. So I've been working on those. Specifically, I've been making dwarves. That's the one I just recorded yesterday. Check out these dwarves. This pattern should be coming this weekend. Um, I'm just putting the finishing touches on them uh, tomorrow. I finished recording the video and editing it last night. So so dwarves are coming up ASAP. And then we're going to do kobolds. Now, I changed the kobold pattern a lot from the rough drafts. But look at how cute this little thing is. It's so cute. Um, I used a lot of feedback from the rough drafts to uh, make some changes to this. But I really like the... It, I made it so you don't have to sew anything on at all. So it's like a no-sew pattern completely. I really, really am proud of the changes that I made. Um, shout out to everybody that has given me feedback on the uh, rough drafts. Um, I'm also going to be doing thank yous at the end of my patterns now for people that have given me feedback. So in the future, I'll let you know when new patterns come out and I will give you, uh, yes, that's right, Stitched fan in the house, Stitch references. Um, I'll be sure to give you uh, thanks in the pattern for giving me, uh, for being a tester. So yeah. 
if you want to test out patterns. I'll let you know how to do that soon. I'm building a new page for it uh, that I think is going to be way cleaner. Um, and then obviously we're going to be finishing up after that. We're going to be finishing up our miniature dragons patterns. And if you are a fan of Stitched, I am going to be uh, releasing what the rules are for all of these different characters. Uh, so if you wanted to use them in the game Stitched, you totally can. Uh, and I'll be explaining all that soon. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about those ones. And then after the dragon, the baby dragon, we're going to be working on our Pikmin patterns. Because I don't know if you heard... But there's a new Pikmin game coming out this year, and I am so excited. Pikmin is my absolute favorite uh, video game franchise from Nintendo. So we're going to be going pretty pretty hard on Pikmin in February and March. And then April comes, and we're launching something new. Someone ad asked if the kit membership is coming back. The answer to that question is yes, but with a twist. Yes, with a twist, in in a good way, I think. I think it's a really cool twist. I'm, I'm changing the system up in a really cool way. I really, really think you like it. I really think you're gonna like it. I took, I'm took. i taking a lot of inspiration from video games. That will not help you decipher what I mean at all. <laughs> but I will explain. Will I release the rules for Fungaloids? Sure can, Stitched fan. Sure can, Stitched fan. Hello, Dad. Thank you for joining. My dad was over last night helping me make a bunch of things uh, and fix up our kitty litter box. We got an, They got us an automatic litter box for Christmas and we put it all together. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right. So I made our wings. Now we need our tail. And we should probably make a few things today. I think we'll have enough time to make a hummingbird and something else. So we'll have to vote on what else to make after we're done with the hummingbird or like, you know, close to the end of the hummingbird. Uh, live streams, you know what, man, we did so many live streams last year, it was crazy. If anybody has the time or effort, wants to put the effort in to count how many live streams we did last year, I am super curious. I meant to do that right before the stream started, but I didn't. Ooh, gee, good question. Will it be like crochet this to unlock this? That uh, is definitely plans for the future, but that is not what is coming in April, no. But that is definitely, I have plans for something like that uh, added to the website soon. But I'm not gonna call it unlocking, I'm gonna call it untangling. So if you wanna untangle certain patterns, you have to finish other patterns. But yeah, that's that's in a sec. That's 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 I've got a lot of work to do before I get to that. Because there's just Yeah, we're we're doing something different in April. I really hope you like it. Okay. Now we got the tail done. I love the tail for this hummingbird because it looks like a little heart. It's very cute. Okay, so we got our tail, we got our wings. We need our feats. We need some feats. Oh, thank you, Cooper. How was your guys' holiday, by the way? What did you guys do for Christmas? I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas if you celebrated it. I hope you guys had an amazing New Year's. Jules and I had a very relaxing New Year's. Uh, we basically, we went to go get um, Shabu Shabu, which is like a, it's like a Japanese, uh, soup thing where you make your soup um, uh, like in front of you it's, I, I, it's kind of hard to explain but look it up shabu shabu it's very cool and so we did that for thing for uh, for New Year's Eve and then we just had a nice night just us two hanging out we talked about our year we talked about new goals that we had this year for each other and ourselves and yeah, it was just a really nice, chill New Year's for us. Happy birthday, Etta! And hello from the Philippines, wow. Cecilia, hello from the Philippines. Welcome to the stream. 
Oh yeah, that I was gonna say that too. Okay, so Sarah said power went out over 32 hours on Christmas Eve. Oh, oh my God, that's actually really cool. Uh, not the the power going out is a bummer. I'm sorry that that happened, but I'm really glad you guys made the best of it. They, she said they played cards by candlelight, and it was pretty nice. That sounds really nice. That you know what? That sounds like a Christmas you're never gonna forget. Which are the best Christmases. Well, sometimes they're not the best Christmases, but that actually does sound like a pretty nice Christmas. It sounds really unique. Unique. We played, uh, for Christmas Day, we went to uh, Jules's family, uh, to her grandma grandma's house, so, uh, and we played a bunch of Scrabble. We played like four games of Scrabble. I lost every one of them, pretty bad. Um, I was, uh, I'm not very good at Scrabble. Uh, <laughs> and her family is crazy good at Scrabble. They are like fiends. That's their, that is their go-to game over the holidays. So yeah, for Christmas I lost at Scrabble a bunch, ate some ham and uh, just chilled out. It was so nice. It was like a really, really nice uh, New Year's and Christmas of just like, I really, we really needed a calm one because we had just moved and it, we've had a lot going on. So I was very happy to have those, that Christmas and New Year's. Um, all right. Okay. Leaf sauce. No, Linda. Okay, Linda has a question. Linda asks, I want to make two sets of game pieces. I'm guessing you're talking about stitched. Uh, I think you're talking about Stitch, but I don't know. For my son and daughter-in-law, how do I make them so you can tell the difference between the sets? What a great question. Um, my answer to that question is, instead of making it so there's a difference between the sets, make it so there's a difference between every single character. What I mean by that is customize every single character that you make. So, for example, um, let's look at those dwarves I was just showing you. So let's say you wanted to make a bunch of dwarves for stitch pieces in the future. I made them all look different, like from each other. And I think that is way better than making a whole set that all looks the same. It means a lot more when every single character looks different from each other because they get this backstory and, and you get like, you just get like actual emotional feelings. <laughs> about a crocheted piece. So like, this guy's got a crazy big beard. I don't have any names for these yet. If you have any name suggestions, let me know. But in the games, as I play with these characters, I'm gonna become more and more attached to them and how they play and what has happened to them with each game. So I suggest instead of thinking about it as how do you differentiate the sets from each other, I would say instead, differentiate every single piece from each other so that they all have their own character and personality. And that way they can, the pieces can intermingle with each other too. So if your, uh, if your son has a character that like, he'll, he'll probably have one or two that he really likes that he always plays with, but he probably also have like one or two other pieces in the game that he might not like, he likes, but they're not his main pieces. And and your daughter-in-law might be like, you know what, I'm gonna play with this piece because I don't have a, an orc. You know, I wanna play with two orcs, not just one. So just make them, I would say make them all individual from each other rather than thinking of them as making a whole set. I hope that answers your question. Uh, but I think that is so cool. I'm like, yeah, I'm really, I'm really stoked that you're, that you're doing that. I hope you were talking about Stitch. If you weren't talking about Stitch, then I guess I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Tina, hello Tina. I hope you enjoyed uh, Jack Gurgle saying hi. And hello Lachlan. How are you doing? All right, so we are now making the head of our hummingbird. We gotta give this hummingbird something special though, you know? I'm thinking we do maybe a hat? What do you think? What would hummingbirds want, a hat? Hat sounds kind of fun. Do you guys have any any ideas for how to customize this hummingbird? 
or we can make its beak special like we can do a different color for the beak maybe we could also do big fancy eyes i don't know i don't know what do you think have i ever crocheted a train no i haven't crocheted a train Oh my gosh, Lachlan is, is trying to teach their husband how to crochet. Good luck. I don't think you're going to need it, though. I think I think you got this. Don't know if he's keen, but you're going to try. You, I, you know what? If you're keen, he's keen. You know what I mean? Okay. A nectar feeder. Oh, ooh, a flower crown. Okay, now we're now we're getting somewhere. Zoe, that's a good idea. Flower crown sounds cute. 40 live streams last year. That is almost, let's see, that means we missed, what, 12 weeks? But all in all, that's a lot of live streams. Do you think we can, I think we can top that this year. Because we're going to do different live streams this year too. I want to start doing, let's see, oh, I want to start doing games this year. I want to start finally live streaming video games. Uh, I want to do. We're gonna obviously we're gonna have a bunch of live crochet alongs. I want to do more series of live streams. You know, like how we did our um. Like how we did the uh, the volcano pattern. I want to do that. Like like a like one where every week we make we continue working on one big project and then we have one big project at the end i want to do that more often i think i also want to do more relaxing live streams you know how remember our live stream from october uh the one with the giant ghost where i did it on my uh i crocheted on my my chair over there with the fireplace in the background i really enjoyed that live stream a lot because it was just a lot more relaxing for me and i thought like I don't know. It was just kind of fun, like fun and nice. So I think I want to do more live streams like that this year as well. I just, I kind of want to keep them, keep you on your toes. <laughs> I want to do something new all the time on these live streams, um, but still continuously do our crochet alongs, obviously. A heart in its beak. I could try that. That kind of sounds crazy, Sonia. But we could try that. Iris liked the design alongs. Okay, good. Good feedback. Yeah, we're definitely going to be doing a lot more design alongs this year. I'm also making it, um, me and my uh, web designer, Jimmy, are uh, making it way easier to implement patterns onto the website uh, with the idea being when I do those crochet along design along patterns, uh, uh, someone can actually be adding them to the website while while we're actually teaching the pattern. So it'll be even easier to add patterns onto the website. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's actually a big thing that I wanted to let you guys know about is the new uh, system on the website. We're almost done with it. Um, it's super clean. It just, I, I hope you guys notice the difference. I think a lot of you, I think if you really are looking, of course you're gonna notice the difference, but the basic idea is we're building a new system in the back end of clubcrochet.com so that I can just implement, like round one is this, round two is this, and then it automatically adds check marks to each round and it makes it really clean when you're looking at on mobile or on desktop so everything looks like it's put together really simply. I'm super excited about it. I really wanna get it across the finish line um, uh, like this week or next. So I'll, I'll probably be letting you know uh, about it next live stream. I'll probably be talking about it a lot more then. But yeah. Yes, yeah, Cooper, helpful for you. <laughs> um, try to give, I have a pattern, but I generally use it again. Oh yeah, someone asked about gnomes. Um, since I'm doing dwarves, I think I wanna do gnomes too. So I think we're gonna be designing gnomes soon. Um, I also want to start designing uh, different items. So I want to do like, uh, where did I put that? So we got our like, our dwarves, right? I want to do tutorials for like little miniature axes and like tools for them, helmets for them. That's my goal. That's my goal for these, um, 
for basically the first three months of 2023 is really clean out my um clean out the rough draft patterns redesign how those kind of work and then uh, going from there and adding some new stitched stuff and then launching the new big project that I've been working on for the past three months. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good, we are on track. A gnome pattern. Yeah, I, the so what I've been trying to, the reason I haven't done a gnome yet, I've crocheted a lot of gnomes. I'm not gonna lie. I've made like probably four or five, actually probably even more than that of gnomes. The reason I haven't done the pattern is because I change the pattern every time I've been doing it because there's so many different interpretations of gnomes. There's like, I could do the gnome where it's got the big hat and all you see is the nose and a big beard. I've crocheted a couple of those. I've done some where they're more like Dungeons and Dragons gnomes. So I'm trying to find out the perfect design that kind of like melds the two so that you can customize your gnome however you want to. You know, that's kind of my thing too. I really like making patterns that can be customized. So yeah, that's that's the reason why a gnome pattern isn't already out. Yep, exactly, Linda, a bonimal gnome. That's pretty much exactly the idea. I want to make it so it's a pattern that is not, you don't have to sew anything together for or anything like that. And then I've got some really fun ideas for how to make them playable in Stitched. I've also got some big ideas for Stitched this year. Um, but those, I, I need to make like some really massive changes on the um, on the stitchthegame.com website. Uh, just to make it look prettier, I have got I have some very subtle rule changes to the game, uh, just to make it a little bit more fun for all ages. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of ideas, as you probably already knew about me. I'm kind of like <sighs> the ideas don't stop coming, and wait. They don't stop coming and they just keep 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 coming. <laughs> Am I going to make more dragons? Yes. Not only are we going to make more dragons, I want to try making a giant dragon this year using chunky yarn. Like big. I want to make a big dragon. That, that would be really cool. It's hard because there's so many things I want to do this year, you know? I just want to make so many ideas. You're an ideas man. Thank you. I know. Don't I know it? I'm an ideas man. It's like they, I just, I just keep coming up with them, which is good. You know, I never want them to go away. Please keep the ideas coming. They're fun. Oh, Linda, you can totally catch up with Stitched. It's way easy. That's, I mean, so Linda, the reason I, the, what I was just saying is like, I want to make some changes to the website is exactly what you said. I want to make it more approachable for, for newbies. I want people to come into the game of Stitched and be like, oh, I get it. There's a really easy way to play this game. And then you can complicate things a little bit more. And then if you want to get really detailed, you can complicate things even more. So the idea is basically like, you start with the basic rules of the game of just making like of just having like goblins trolls and orcs and stuff and having really simplified rules there's no special abilities or anything like that and then if you want to make it more complicated you have other abilities and then if you want to complicate it even more you have items and then if you want to complicate it even more you have different characters that you can play with like gnomes and dwarves and kobolds things like that yeah, I, but you know what the big thing, the reason I haven't had a big chance to work on Stitched is because I don't have anybody to play Stitched with. It sucks. My buddy that I used to play Stitched with all the time, Emilio, moved to Pittsburgh. And ever since he moved, I haven't had really a buddy that consistently plays the game with me. And I wish I did. So I need to find someone that really, that lives near me and we'll play this game with me all the time so I can test out all the different changes that I want to make to it. But anyhow, 
Let's let's talk about something other than stitched this year. Uh, what else am I excited about for 2023? Man, so much. I'm we're gonna do. Me and Jules are gonna go on a vacation this year. Our first vacation since like 2019. I'm really excited about that. I mean, clearly, we could use it. <laughs> it's been it's been a while since I've had a big vacation. So we're gonna try to go to Japan this year, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, as like a pre-wedding honeymoon. We also are going to be planning our honeymoon or our wedding a bunch this year. Uh, I don't think we're going to get married this year unless we get really lucky with a venue. Uh, we probably will end up getting married in 2024 just because we're going to so many weddings this year and all the venues are booked up. So it's just kind of hard to figure out what we want and how to make it happen, you know, but we'll get there. I'm not too worried about it. I know I'm marrying her regardless. Oh, Morley, thank you so much for the happy new year. I hope you're having a great new year as well. Hope you're hope you're living it up. Okay. What other kind of patterns do you guys want to see this year? Linda loves the dinosaur patterns. Me too. That's another thing. This year we are going hard on the dinosaur game. I'm going to be putting more effort into that. Because we, like, it just needs to be worked on more. Just needs more work. I've gotten a bunch of feedback on my first draft of the dinosaur game. And now I've got a second draft ready to rock and roll. I just haven't had the chance to release it to everybody just yet. Okay, so now I finished that round. I think we are like, it's funny. I'm, I'm like crocheting really tightly right now. So hopefully this will fit on our guy's head. Like, look at this. This could be fit into this head. Like that's how tightly I'm crocheting right now. Kind of weird. Um, okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we're on round nine. Very cool, all right. Chain one, oops. That's not a chain. Okay, so we got request for bonomals, more bonomals. More bonomals are gonna be coming in February um, because the little miniature dragon is technically a bonomal. So with that, I was gonna do, uh, I was gonna come out with a few more bonomal patterns that I have been like waiting to come out with for way too long. So we're gonna do things like, um, I think I'm gonna do an elephant um, and then uh, and then probably put some finishing touches on some other ones that we've designed in the past. Oh, I just found a mistake on this pattern. Oopsies. Yes, more food design alongs. Totally. I get that for sure. I think I was supposed to crochet around this red as we were going, but oh well, I didn't do that. So we're just gonna pull it through. Like that. And I guess we'll just crochet around the blue as we go here. I think I changed colors too quickly. Hold on. Undo that one. There we go. Now we're supposed to change colors. So we slip stitch here. And then we change to red. And we chain one. And then we'll just... Oops. We'll just work around this as we go. I'm remembering things. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Boom. Yeah, this is working. Okay. Birthday themed items. Ooh, Captain Amazing. You might have just 
You might have just hit a nail on a head. Oh, Victoria, thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Victoria, that is a really sweet thing to say. Victoria said that they don't exhaust myself. We care more about your health than your new patterns. I really appreciate that, Victoria, a lot. That you that that means so much to me. Um, and don't worry, I won't exhaust myself. I'm only gonna do what I can do. You know? I think the big goal this year is just like finishing projects as much as I can before I start a different one. Because that's kind of my biggest problem, is that like I start things before I before I finish another one. So one, two. Or five, I think I do six of these. So I need chain one and then slip stitch into this one. Like that. And then switch to our other color. And then I guess we'll have to just go like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. I think what we'll just have to do is uh, work around this red for just one or two stitches. Let's do, actually, you know what? No, we don't, because we can hide it on the inside. So we don't really need to do that. <laughs> Captain, um, Captain Amazing's like, I care about you too, boo, but also give me all the cacti. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that your wish will come true this year. Captain Amazing. A Moose Bonimal. We actually have a Moose Bonimal. Uh, Happy Etta. Oh wait, hey Cooper, you didn't tell me. What, what do you want in the background here? You didn't let me know. Cause you support it. So we gotta add something to your, to the tree that will be there eventually oodles and caboodles of crafts hi everybody hi Vicky how are you hope you're having a great day I'm just really excited about this year. I think it's going to be a good one. I think the first, the start of it, like from here to like April when I launched the new project. Oh, whatever. You can pick them out better than you. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh, I will do that then. Um, uh, what was I just saying? Oh, now until about like April, is gonna be busy. I'm, I think I'm gonna be really busy for the start of this year. Um, just because there's a lot of like logistics that go to this new idea and a lot of a lot of web pages that I'm building. But until then I'm pretty excited. Dude, Matt! My friend Matt's in the chat. Hey Matt, how you doing? Matt is a really good friend from college. Uh, and he actually just came to visit not that long ago. His pictures on our um on our refrigerator. Your picture's like the, like right in front of our refrigerator. <laughs> Thanks for joining, dude. You should learn to crochet. Um, okay, we're adding something for Cooper. Let's go ahead and add. Let's add. I mean, I'll keep the burb train going. Later on, we're gonna be changing this up to do, instead of burbs, we're gonna do, um, um, ooh, let's do this burb. This is a weird one. We haven't seen this one in forever, too. Hold on, I gotta find the bottom of it. Oh, wait, that was a good one, too. I'm just gonna empty out all my burbs. Yeah, let's do this burb. Okay, so this one's for you, Cooper. A, um, Where'd, where'd the bottom go? Wait, hold on. Did I lose the bottom? Oh, no, here it is. Okay, this is for you, Coop. We're gonna put this 
in the background, a toucan. Our toucan, our one and only toucan. Nether pattern we need to finish this year. We'll have to add it to the preview patterns. There we go, look at you two. Oh my God, you guys are so cute together. Mwah. Cute. <laughs> Oh, that was lame, but I'm cool with it. But I'm cool with it. When is my birthday? Happy Etta, my birthday is January 18th. Um, we're actually gonna be doing a live stream the day after my birthday. So the 19th, we'll do a live crochet along of, uh, I think we're gonna do a cobalt, but you know what? I might just make it, because it's my birthday the day before, I might just make it so that like, we make whatever I wanna make. Maybe something weird. We'll design, maybe maybe we'll design a stitched character or something crazy like that. No promises though. Okay, so we got the head done as far as like the bot, the base part of the head. Now we need to add our beak. So we'll go ahead and get that. And we don't want the beak to be too long. I once one time I made one of these hummingbirds and the beak was like crazy long. Just made it not look good, honestly. Um, so I think this is actually a pretty good length for the beak. So we're gonna do that one. Hi, Ama, how are you? I hear you. How you doing? You having a good day? I hope you are. I hope you're having a great January. Me and my friend were talking about the uh, colors of um, of months. I know that's kind of a weird thing, but I was thinking about like, what colors are all the, like in your mind are the different months? For me, it's like January is like a crisp, like a light blue, honestly kind of like this color, but maybe even more gray and toned down, like even less saturated. That's the color I think about for January. What do you think about for January? What color do you think January feels like to you? And we'll keep going. I mean, February for me is pink. Like that's that's the color I think about for February. It's obviously, obviously there's Valentine's Day, but there's also, uh, it's my mom's birthday. It's Jules's birthday. It's uh, one of my good friends, Garrett's birthday. And I don't know. There's just something about February that feels pink and fresh. Happy Etta loves crochet. Well, guess what? You're in the right place because me too. Me too. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Happy Etta. February is red. See, I don't think I don't think of February as red because I basically because I'm like saving red for a later month because I kind of feel like like August or September kind of feels a little bit red to me too. But I don't know. So I'm just cutting this pipe cleaner down just a little bit because it's just a little long for my preference. March is green, I agree. I think March is like a like a forest green in my opinion. Something like that. Hey Teresa, what are we making? We are making hummingbirds per the chat's request. So we just need to sew in these ends and add the eyes and then sew around the beak. And then uh, we might make my favorite pattern of last year, the raptor next, after we finish this hummingbird, just because it's such an easy pattern to make. It's kind of like, why not, you know? But we need to customize this hummingbird first. Okay, Ari, hi, hi Ari. Try, the, please don't spam the chat though. But hello, how you doing? Hope you're having a good day. You're gonna go a long time out if you're not careful. Cooper's, Cooper's gonna be, gonna get you. It's all good. Thanks for understanding. 
Uh, thank you, Ama. I'm good at crochet. Yeah, I mean, I better be. At this point, I use some, my neighbor, I gave my neighbor, um, I've been giving my neighbor something different every month. That's what I always do with my neighbors. Uh, every place I've lived, I always give my neighbor stuff or my landlord things, just like crochet things, because I end up having so much. Uh, just because, you know, over the year, I just make a lot of crochet things. So I gave her something. I gave her a, uh, a pumpkin, I think, for October. And she was like, she was like, wow, you're really good at crocheting. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I think it's one of the things I'm best at in the entire world. That and Super Smash Brothers. I'm very good at that. <laughs> but that's not really as impressive, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe it is to certain people. Ooh, speaking of Super Smash Brothers and video games, what video games are you guys, if you play video games, what video games are you excited about this year? Because, I mean, you know the one I'm really excited about. I'm super excited about Pikmin, which is like a game where it's like, like you control these little, little characters, uh, these little like ant kind of like plant, plant, plant ants. I don't know, something like that. Um, so I'm really excited about that one. Zelda, apparently Zelda is coming out this year. Apparently Zelda is coming out this year. What, a new Zelda? Yes, give it to me. I want it now. Um, oh yeah, there we go. Ari, uh, Ari asks, how do you make the magic ring? Um, you know what? So Cooper just posted a link to uh, my video tutorial for the magic ring that is probably the most helpful for that, but I am going to have to make another magic ring in a second for the um, the burb body. So I'll I'll go through my little uh, like a mini mini tutorial for you in just a second. But if you want a more in depth tutorial, use that link that um, Cooper posted. That's probably the best place to go for it. All right, we're just gonna twist this up. We're making our beak for our humming burb right now. I think it'd be nice to use, maybe we could use like um, embroidery thread and make some really tiny flowers for a flower crown. Cause someone suggested we wanted, they wanted me to make a flower crown for this. It also might be really fun to just make a giant flower that he's wearing. Actually, I kind of like that even more. A big flower for its head. Like it's sitting out in the rain cause it's raining right now outside. Oh, Cooper, I've been seeing you play Breath of the Wild. I go online and Cooper is like always playing Breath of the Wild right now. I just keep seeing him. I'm like, go for it, boy. That game is so much fun. What's my favorite kind of yarn? Uh, I think my favorite kind of yarn is cotton. I really like uh, worsted weight cotton a lot. By the way, can we just for a second look at that and tell me... Tell me that's not a good, that, come on. I mean, come on, that was really good. <laughs> Ugh, I'm getting real good at this stuff. All right. Ooh, March 10th is Super Mario Day. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna launch, announce a new Mario game this year. Ooh, that gave me chills. That would be so cool. I love Mario Odyssey. So it'd be really fun to play a new one there. Uh, Con is, Can is asks, is there a pattern to make that toucan? You know, there's not yet, but I'm gonna add it to my pattern previews, uh, which I'm working on right now. So there will be a pattern soon for that. Okay, I think we should give our hummingbird here some makeup. I don't know why, I just feel like it'd be look really cute with some like purple eyeshadow or something. How do you guys feel about that? Don't you think that'd be cute? Or or am I going solo here? Yeah, I know, me too, Captain Amazing. I need a new Mario game. I'm frothing. Need it. Okay, so first off, adorable. Wow, very cute. Second off, but... <laughs> 
Sorry. Third off, I might do that again. The fuzz, the fuzz is getting to my nose. Oh my gosh. So yesterday, uh, I was looking, oh, a bit of blush. I love that Cooper. Yes. We'll add a little bit of blush for sure. Oh my God. That's so cute. This might be the cutest hummingbird so far. Um, okay, we want blush, so let's do some pink, because I think that's a really good idea. So we'll use like, right? We'll use like pink for the blush. I don't know if we even need actually the eyeshadow then, if we do the blush. Oh, a flower umbrella. Oh my God, that would be so cute, Sonia. Sonia, sorry. Maybe some lipstick. I don't know. Lipstick might be tough because like birds don't have lips. Isn't that weird to think about that birds don't have lips? You know what else is weird? I was watching something yesterday that said that like fish are all extremely different from each other. Like you, you think that like a salmon and a, uh, and a, anchovy are somewhat similar because they're both fish but really they've been evol evolving separate from each other for so long that they're like crazy different from each other it's like like they, they they branched off so far away like even further away than we've branched off from like like mice you know what i mean it's crazy long it's been a crazy long time for for fish to be evolving okay so let's try like right here Maybe. Oh, that one doesn't want to go in there. Let's try it. Let's try it from the other side. So we're going to go like this. And do we want to do. Uh, we want it to be closer to the eye, I think. So let's maybe go like up here. And then over. Might even make it go down like that. That's kind of cute, right? Like this, so it so it's kind of got like an angled, so it's kind of angled down. Is that like cute or weird? No, that looks weird. <laughs> you know, you know, we gotta try things. To know if it does, if it works or not. So we'll just do round down here and then over. And I think I'll double it up. Let's try that. Ooh, Carolina, I'll definitely do that. So like this, that's what I'm thinking. One, and then two, doubling it up. Let's see what doubling it up looks like. Oh my God, she's looking so cute. Well, do we like that? That's the question. I don't, hmm, I'm having a hard time with the blush. That kind of doesn't look like blush to me. Let's let's try something else before we before we settle on this. I mean, I can always redo that, obviously. Let's try. Oh my god, a tiny lace shawl. If I had the time, I would totally do that. That that sounds like something that's going to take a while though. Let's try this. Let's try it in between a stitch. So that way it's a little bit higher up on the face. See, so instead of going like between two stitches like I would, like right here, I'm gonna go right here in between an actual stitch instead of, instead of between two different stitches. Oh, that's cuter. Because now it looks like it's more on the, on the blue, which I think makes it look a little bit more blushy. I do, actually, now I'm thinking we do wanna add eyelashes. I don't know, what do you guys think, eyelashes? How do you feel about eyelashes? Do we like them? Do we hate them? 
Isn't it funny how men always have really nice eyelashes? Have you noticed that? Like, women try to... Like, like, not all women, obviously. I'm being very, very generic. But people that wear a lot of makeup like to, like, up their eyelashes a lot. But then people that don't do it always have, like, the nicest eyelashes. It's so weird. Maybe it's just because, like... I don't know. I don't know. We're turning it into an Animal Crossing character? Hell yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, Sonya, yeah. We should give it, so we'll give it eyelashes, we'll give it some blush, a cute little flower hat, and then we'll give it a five-pointed spear. A demon spear. No, I'm just kidding. We won't be doing that. We're gonna make a freaking adorable hummingbird today. I think it's all right for for dudes to like things that are pretty cute. Personally, that's my that's my soapbox that I'm standing on. Wow, I'm so unique. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to my TED talk. I think boys like can like things that are cute. Oh, that's so cute though, look at that. It's subtle, but it really adds a lot to the to the face, in my opinion. Thank you for the idea, Cooper. I think that was Cooper that said, give it blush. All right. That's pretty goo, that's pretty goo. I like that. Um, should we try eyelashes? I think if I'm gonna do eyelashes, I'm gonna do them very, very, very subtle. So we're gonna go, we'll take this. I think we can use, I think I've got some black thread. That would be really nice for eyelashes. Where would I have kept the black thread? You know, it's in the other room, one second. Okay, real quick, check this out. Check this cool box out, okay? I got this box the other, uh, like a few months ago. It's, it looks really simple, right? I got this from this company called, um, looks like their name is Della Q. Anyhow, it's super cool. It's gonna be messy when I open this, but it is a really cool box. It holds all my crochet stuff here. It's got magnets on the back so that I can take like scissors and like magnetically attach them to the back and you can do like needles and stuff on the back and you can take out this part and it's got a whole area for, for extra materials. So I've got like yarn and stuff in there. And the way coolest part is you see these little, see these little cutouts on the side? All you have to do is you put yarn through that and you can close it and you can actually crochet while it's being pulled through, so then it's all in the box, so it's not getting like tangled or anything. It's super cool. I love this box. Big, big fan of this box. But anyhow, the reason I got it is because I needed this black yarn. Or black thread, rather. So we just need a little bit of this black thread. Okay. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the eyelashes. I'm basically just thinking we come out through like right here where the eye actually is. Actually, you know what, maybe like one over right here. And then we'll just go in through like the actual eye, right, like that. Let's see how that looks. 
that's pretty cute. Let's see, if we add another bit to it, you know, if we go like up slightly, like right here, and then we go down through the same stitch like this, can we do, will it look even more eyelashy? Oh, oh, oh my God, that's so cute. <laughs> what? That's adorable. Oh my God. That's too cute. Yeah, we're, we're doing that for sure. For sure. We're spending so much time on this face. We probably won't have the time to make a raptor after this, but you know what? We're going to have the cutest hummingbird in the freaking world after this. Also, we're going to have to name this hummingbird. I'll, I'll create a Google sheet for us in a sec. And so we can start compiling a list of names and then I'll ask the chat. I'll ask, actually, we'll ask the, uh, yeah, we'll ask the chat after what, what name to vote on or something like that. Oh my gosh, that's too cute though. That's too cute. Okay. I'm excited to figure out the flower on the top too. I have a few ideas. But we'll just have to mess around with it after. So we're going to go up through here. Down through where the eye is like this. Maybe. Yeah, like that. Don't pull it too tight. We also want it to go down a little bit. There we go. And then up through just above it, like right, yeah, like right like that maybe? Let's try like that. And then down through where we started with the other eyelash. Like this. Oh gosh, that's cute. It's so subtle, but it, you know what? It's so cute. Oh my God, she's adorable. I will say though, uh, you know what's kind of cool? I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a male hummingbird though. Because female hummingbirds, even though it's got beautiful eyelashes, and beautiful blush, and she's adorable. Male hummingbirds are the ones with the feathers, like the red on their chest to attract the female birds. So this is, I think, gonna be a male bird that's just, that's just cute as a button. You know, they can't help themselves. It's not their fault they're adorable. All right, look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, we need to fix that eyelash a little bit. Got a little pulled in. Oopsies. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you know it's a dude because he's got beautiful eyelashes, like we were just saying. <laughs> Okay, we need, <laughs> next up, we can start finally working on the body. Now, uh, Ari, here is, I'll show you a cu really cute, uh, a really simple way to make the um, a magic loop, if you hadn't already watched that video that I was showing you about. So what I like to do is I take the yarn, I place it so that it is face down towards the ground, like this, and I hold it with my non-dominant, uh, middle finger and thumb like this see and then I take this end and I put it between my pinky and ring finger and close it in like that now with this end attached to the ball I go around my index and middle finger two times one and then two but for the second one we want to make an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back like that and then we're gonna take this tail end and place it where the other end is like this and then we're gonna take our ring and pinky finger and then close it in and that's gonna keep everything held in place. Now we're gonna take our crochet hook, face the yarn backwards towards you. So these two parallel lines are towards you and you're gonna take the crochet hook and go under the first bar and yarn over the second one and pull that second one under the first like that and then loop it around like this. See, it makes a little loop on the end. 
Now we're gonna go over this first bar and hook onto the, the second one like this. You might need your finger to help you guide it over the crochet hook. And then once it's on the crochet hook like this, you wanna pull it through the loop that you made. The easiest way to get it through this loop is to scoop it. So you wanna take the yarn and then scoop it like that to help it get through the chain, like that. And that's the best way to make the magic loop. Now you can take it off your finger and it should be locked into place because of that chain. And then you can take this tail end and we'll pull it tight and it'll tighten the hole up a little bit. So now we can work our first stitches into the center of that magic loop. And there is a quick tutorial for how to make the magic loop. All right, more tea. By the way, I'm gonna be coming out with this. Let's put it on the screen. This is coming to the shop pretty soon too. It's Jimbo on a mug. I also just ordered a bunch of stickers. Uh, I haven't ordered the pins yet, so I gotta order the pins. And I ordered some other stickers too, so different designs. I've got like a one-up sticker and a heart yarn ball. Some really cute designs that I've had made. I think you'll like them a lot. Um, oh, oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Before I continue, let's, uh, I'm gonna create the Google Sheet for us so that we can choose the names. Um, I don't know why I did that. Let's do this, I guess. As I choose the names, we'll let you look at this beautiful tip thing. Just hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Uh, <laughs> hold on. File. New spreadsheet. Name our hummingbird. Name. Named by. And we'll. I'll just put a random name like uh, Genie by Louie. Okay. Name our. Okay. There we go. There. Oopsies. Hold on, I've screwed something up. Okay, I got it. Okay, so we're naming the hummingbird there. I just put it, a link in the chat. Uh, if you go to the chat and you can uh, go into there and then submit a name, I'm gonna choose my top four to vote on at the end of the live stream. Okay, let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The Amaze Feed. See you later, thanks for joining. Hope you had a great day. Okay, so we are working on the head of the body, the burp body rather. Yeah, we're gonna make, I mean, I think that this is gonna be funny, but I think our hummingbird's gender is fluid. I think we got. I think we've got a. This hummingbird can be whatever we, it wants to be. Name it whatever your heart desires, basically whatever you think is best, and I'm just gonna choose my favorites. How do you use it? Uh, G asked, how do you use it? I'm guessing you're asking about the uh, Google Sheet. You just need to go into that Google Sheet and uh, type in a name. And also try to type in where your, um, 
Like what name, like who you are, so I can give you credit. You know? Oh, there we go. Someone, people are adding in things. Make sure to put who you, who named it. Oh yeah, we got names coming in for sure. All right, let's keep going. Two rounds of single crochets now. Hey Froggy, how you doing? How you doing, eh? Froggy went to knitting. Sounds like I said something in a different language. Froggy went to knitting. Those are some good names. Oh, I like the name Clive. That's cute. Oh, I can feel we got it. Okay, ready? I'm sorry for everybody that hates this, but I'm doing it anyhow. Oh. Wow, don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. Whew. Oh yeah, Cooper can add names in for you if you uh, don't, if you can't access the Google Sheet. By the way, quick thank you. Everybody should say thank you, Cooper, because Cooper is an extremely helpful for these live streams. And uh, yeah, not only is he here to help maintain the chat so that no one's spamming the chat and if we have any bots come in he catches those but it's also just like extremely helpful for all kinds of things like adding in names for this stuff and uh, writing down crochet patterns so everybody quick say thank you cooper because thank you so much cooper you're extremely helpful and i appreciate you a bunch thank you for your help All right, we are gonna add, I'm gonna add a tuft of hair on the top of our burbs head. Um, I really should do one on the top of that head too, but it's gonna be covered by a flower crown, so we're gonna keep it the way it be. But I think this will work for our burb head. Look at that, that's cute. Um, okay, next we're doing, we're on, I'm on round five, if you're following along in the written instructions. One, two, three. Okay. Four and five. Four and five. Thank you for everybody being so nice in the chat too. I appreciate you all. Good start of the year. By the way, if um, we are going to be doing, so I'm gonna be coming out with that, uh, our pattern for the dwarf that I was saying, I'm gonna to try to come out with that pattern on um, Saturday. So expect it Saturday, maybe Sunday, if I can't finish the photos and everything in time for Saturday. Um, it'll be available for membership accounts uh, then. Uh, and then after that, so I'm gonna take a week off from live streaming just because I have a wedding to go to. It's uh, Jules's cousin, cousin's wedding, not this weekend, but next weekend. So next Thursday, I'm going down to the wedding so I can't live stream. Um, so we're not going to be having a live stream that weekend, but the weekend after will be my birthday on uh, the 18th will be my birthday. And so the next live stream is going to be the day after my birthday, the 19th. Um, we will be live and we'll be crocheting something fun. I don't know what I kind of want to do a dwarf, but I also kind of want to do something like 
different, you know? I want, I want to kind of just, like, noodle. Just maybe, maybe just, like, not plan a pattern at all and then just, like, come up with something on the spot. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. But that's going to be the next live stream. will be January 19th, uh, same time, same place, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on YouTube on that Thursday, January 19th. So there's just your heads up. I am working on a, uh, a calendar so that you can keep track of when these live streams come out and when new patterns are gonna plan on coming out because I really wanna make it so you know what's coming so that way you can be prepared for it and that way I have some accountability so that you know, hey, I'm supposed to be finishing this then and it'll help me stay accountable, I think. At least I'm hoping. One, two, three. Okay, I think this is our last stitch. Yes, this will be our last stitch for round six of the burb body. And now we can change to our main color. We're, we're doing pretty good on time, I think. You know, especially since we didn't start the stream, like we didn't start crocheting till like 3.30 at the earliest. Which again, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry the live streams took so long for me to get going. Uh, I'm gonna get better at that this year though. A dwarf inside a cake, that's cute. I like that idea, Sunshine. Boom. Okay. Eleven and then an increase. Alright, so one, two. Six. And then it's two and in, yeah, okay. Cute, 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 cute. Hi, happy Etta. How are you? <laughs> Linda Linda wants Cooper as the name for the for our burb today. I like that. That's cute. Good night from the UK. Have a great night, Christine. Sweet dreams. I hope you dream dream about crochet. actually doing pretty good as far as the bird body i i'm thinking about how to make the flower crown i made a banana once i know this sounds funny but i made a banana once that i think will work like the way i made that banana i think is a great way for me to make the flower which is gonna make sense soon which dinosaur is the easiest for a beginner i would say the triceratops probably is the easiest for a beginner because a lot of beginners have made it as their first pattern. Um, it's also free, which I think, you know, helps beginners go like, okay, well, if it's free, I'll give it a shot. Um, it's quick, uh, relatively easy pattern. I also think that the, um, I actually think that the Brontosaurus is a pretty easy pattern too, because there's nothing, there's not really any fancy stitches that you're using. 
but I think that the Triceratops probably is the easiest. What I really want to do... Ah! How did I mess this up? I don't know how to do this. What I really want to do is I want to make a pattern for dinosaur eggs. And uh, because those would be crazy easy to make, you know, just be like eggs, which are just single crochets and decreases. Um, and that way I can give people a pattern that's like, hey, if you are a complete beginner, maybe make an egg first and then you can hatch it <laughs> as the next pattern. I don't know. Yes, do not delete other people's names if you are in the um if you're doing name suggestions and stuff. Okay, so we got our baby beak on there. Let's add our second set of eyes. These are the eyes that go uh on the burr body itself. Which I mean, we should probably give these eyelashes too. You know. Yeah, Zoe, I absolutely do. Dream about crochet. Abha, Ab Abia, Abia. I think it's Abia. Um, asks where, what kind of yarn do you use, and where do I get it from? I usually use. Uh, they, Abby says they they get that there's at Walmart. That's funny. I've never bought yarn at Walmart before. Um, I use usually use lily sugar and cream yarn um that's the yarn i really like right now i am getting some new yarn but that's a secret for a later time um <laughs> i'm so bad at secrets um <laughs> uh and you can get that yarn at like any craft store so like joanne fabrics has it um Hobby Lobby probably even has it, but I've actually never been to Hobby Lobby in my life. -y. Abby Dabby. Yeah. Hey, Casey. Oh, no worries at all. Thanks for joining. We're giving eyelashes now to our burb head. I need a sharper needle for this part. And like this. Two. Oh, oh my gosh. I need to do a video on just how to make these eyelashes, like a YouTube short about eyelashes. It's so easy. How do you do you get Ama asks how do you get so good at crochet I'll tell you crochet a lot that's that's the answer to your question honestly I've been crocheting since high school sophomore year of high school so that's like 2007 so and I crochet every single day for many hours so if you were to do that math Let's not, but it's a lot. <laughs> uh, let's see. Every day, let's say for, I would say three, like, because there's days where I don't crochet, obviously, because, like, I'm sick or something, or I just don't have access to my crochet. So let's say, like, 300 days a year-ish I crochet for a couple of hours every single time I do it. So let's say... Two hours, 300 days a year, that's going to be 600 hours a year that I crochet at least. I mean, obviously there's days where I do more, but but let's be conservative. That's 600 hours a day 
or a year. Um, and then that's going to be for 2007. So seven, eight, nine, ten, and then ten plus tw ten plus. Wow, have I been really crocheting that long? It's like 15 years. So let's say 15. So 15 times 600 hours is math. Let's math it. Where's my phone? There. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I would say I've crocheted at least 10,000 hours. I'm going to add an extra thousand to that, that math because I do a lot more and more than two hours a day usually. So we'll say about 10,000 hours. So crochet about 10,000 hours and you'll know, you'll notice that you're a lot better at crocheting. <laughs> oh, really? What are people saying in the... Hey, yeah, whoever's saying weird things in the... Someone keeps saying weird stuff in the... Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna boot whoever that is. Who's doing that? Someone's being a dingus right now, and I don't like it. I can see who's doing that actually, hold on. This person. Yeah, anonymous something. <laughs> What a child. Whoever's doing that, knock it off. All right, great. Um, okay, so now we're back to this. We got our cute little face. Look at that. Wow, wow, wow. Cute, cute, cute. Um, now we need to keep working on the body. Let's do it. Uh, hey, also, hey, if you haven't yet, you should like this video down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. You know the dealio, but really, like this video. Please. Oh, where'd my... I lost the chat. There it is. All right, so now we're on to round seven, no, nine, we're on round nine. All right, one. Ten, and then decrease. No, I wasn't able to boot them, but uh, I think they just got bored of it, hopefully. I mean, I can always go back in the... Oh, nope, they're back. They're back, I can see them. Um, okay, so now, all right, see you later, G. Thanks for joining. We need to, actually we need another round of decreasing and then we can start adding our, our uh, legs and stuff like that.
Someone asked about... Oh, okay. Zoe said... Uh, you're going back to Canada from... I mean, you're going to Australia from Canada soon. And you have no idea how much yarn and what kind of projects to make. What do you take on the plane? What I usually do is I make a lot of, uh, of bonimals. I really like making bonimals when I'm flying on a plane because you can make it without even using a needle. So you can just use a crochet hook and just make the entire piece. So I usually bring a little bottle of eyes, uh, a big thing of like green yarn or, or one color of yarn. It doesn't really matter what the yarn is. And then a little bit of white yarn. And then I just make a bunch of bonimals. And then what I usually do is I just give them to any kids on the that are on the plane or or like parents. I give usually give it to the parents to give to the kids, um, just because you know one of my like I have too many bonimals, uh, and I usually can finish like two bonimals in an hour. And then you end up having like a bunch of little characters after your plane ride. So that's my favorite thing to do on planes is crochet bonimals or goblins. I love crocheting goblins on planes too. But that's just my personal preference. Okay, let's, I'm gonna stuff our character up with all of our excess yarn. Oh wait, we don't need to stuff it yet, but we're going to stuff it with all this excess, excess yarn. Obviously we'll do some stuffing, uh, but first we need to uh, sew on our different parts. So let's start by sewing on our uh, wings like this. We'll put one wing here. Yeah, and what what you also, if you want to do that bottom thing, I also suggest you bring a bunch of mini magnets, obviously, so that you have magnets for them. But I really think that's the cutest thing to do on the planes. One, two, three. And it's just a lot of fun. And then people always ask like, what are you making? And then you can actually like be like, I'll show you in like five minutes. I'm trying to work on a game for Bonimals. What I'm, what I'm thinking right now is a game where you have a bunch of lily pads and you have to like, like you make the board first, which is just a bunch of, you lay out the lily pads and then you have to either like roll a dice or pull a card or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really thought it through enough, but I do think I want to make a game for the frogs and bonimals in general. Maybe that's what we'll do on my birthday. I don't know. We'll find out. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's always a good move too, Zoe. Just make something that you just have a lot, like you don't have to cut or anything. Just something that you can just make a big piece of it. Yeah. I've been working on grass right now. Um, here, I'll show you. It's right here. I just started it. I just started this last night, but it's just a big, I'm, I'm making grass. Uh, and I love projects like this that are just like, mo like you just continuously make it. I just, I really like how this yarn looks too. But anyhow, the reason I made this is so that I can do my idea here is this is gonna go on this part. I'm gonna do it in different sections. So I'll make like, we'll make like a bunch of these that are like, maybe like that long. And it's gonna go right here. And I'll have it so you can button them together so that we can make this part all covered in grass and look really cute. That's my current idea with this grass. I think it's kind of a fun, just a fun idea. Okay, back to this. Jimbo wants to hang out. Oh, you can totally take ma magnets on a plane. I've taken like a bunch of magnets on a plane. I mean, yeah, I've never had a problem with magnets on a plane, personally. I think it's because one, two, I think we can just do it right here. I think it's because uh, like there's magnets in computers too. There's magnets in computers, there's magnets in your phone. So I don't think they really care. I, at least I've never been stopped about 
stopped for having magnets in my bag. I've been stopped for having um, pocket like heating pads because I used to have to bring heating pads for um, my back. Remember when my back was like really, really bad? Which by the way, I have to say 2022, I started 2022 with terrible back pain. And you know what? I finished 2022 with no back pain at all. So that's kind of cool. Let's hope it stays that way. I just realized we should dismiss that pin. Okay. Do you hear Jimbo? He's meowing in the, he's meowing at the door. He wants in. He wants to hang out. Don't worry, bud. You'll have another chance to hang out with the crew in a bit. I like this song. Hey Clayton, how are you? How are you doing today? I hope you're having a really, really nice day. Jim was having a conniption out there. Okay, there's our little tail sewn on. Cute, okay, uh, feet. You want to see the bonimals? Yeah, I'll show you the bonimals in a second. But Abby, not Abby. Ab Abia said um, they're a beginner crocheter, and every time they start a new project, they have commitment issues. Like I don't know if I should start it or like wait until I'm more confident, and I always end up keep pushing it. Help. Okay, my suggestion for that, because I also totally have commitment commitment issues for crochet. Um, my way to solve that, I think, is probably to work on very small projects like I do. Um, projects that take only an hour to make, even if you make it badly, you'll finish a project. So I, I think that's the best way to learn, is because you get, you get a chance to 
go from start to finish with a project. You don't have to worry about having to come back to this project later. You can do it in one go. And even if you don't do a really good job, you learn something while you made it. You get a chance to make it again next time better. And you actually have something finished by the end of the time you're crocheting. So you can actually see your progress without having to like, you know, so you don't frog it and redo it again and stuff like that. So I think that's a great way to um, to deal with commitment issues for with crochet. Cause I don't, like I said, I don't like working on projects that take a long time to make because I get bored of them. I like, I stop making them after a while because they're just like, because of commitment. Like, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't, I don't want to come back to this one over and over. I just want to have something finished. So yeah, I suggest trying smaller projects. I think that's the best, uh, best way to get better at crocheting without having to, um, commit to a giant project that you might not ever finish. And then once you feel more confident about your crochet, from doing a bunch of little miniature things, then try something big, but like, don't go too big. You know, ne I, I would, I highly suggest you do not make a blanket until you're ready to make a blanket because a blanket, while it's not that difficult to crochet a blanket, it is extremely time consuming. So it's like, you're just gonna be making that blanket for like a month or two. And in my experience, I always get bored. Always, every time I make something that big. Okay, we got our feet done. Now we can, let's go ahead. Well, I'll just stuff it a little tiny bit by stuffing the head. I need to grab some more stuffing too. I'm running out. Also my iPad's running out of batteries. Oh. Uh, stuffing. There's some more stuffing there. Um, okay, let's sew it close, or let's do our last round and sew it closed, and then we can add the head on, and then we can finally add our last part, which is gonna be our cute little hat. And then we can vote on our name. Actually, we can vote on our name while we're making our hat, maybe. That'd be kind of nice. I made a baby blanket once too. Uh, Abby said that they made a baby blanket for their third pro and most recent project. It was so, it was really easy and I got to work on my lines, but oh my goodness, how long it took. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I made a baby blanket too once. Uh, it was not supposed to be a baby blanket. <laughs> it was supposed to be a full size blanket, but by the time I got to like halfway to a baby size, blanket I was like this blanket is not going to be a full size blanket there's no way I'm not I need to move on <laughs> I need to crochet something else so it ended up becoming a baby blanket pretty quick though all right that's pretty good cut it pull it twist it bop it and add these threadies thready set go Uh, we also can't forget to add our magnets so that we can pose this hummingbird on a nice metal surface, maybe on our background tree once we get it. Pretty good. I don't think we're going to be able to use all of this extra thread, so we'll just do a little bit more, and then we'll use stuffing for the rest of it. I had a little bit more extra thread than I was actually kind of hoping. A little bit of stuffing and then our magnets to finish it up. That's great. That's great. Jimbo agrees. Okay, magnets, how do they work? 
Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. I'm going to use three of these mini magnets. I don't think I need very many more than three. Let's go right into the bum. So it closed. Okay. There we are, sewn closed. Next thing we want to do is let's put the head on and then we'll pick four names that I like and then we'll make our flower crown for it. So if you want to suggest a name now or never, seriously, do it. Suggest a name before it's too late. I'm going to choose my four favorites in like less than a minute. Look how cute those eyelashes are though. Very cute, bar cute. Oh my God, they're so cute. Okay, uh, we need a tiny bit of stuffing in the head. I also really need to stretch the head out a little bit because it's a little bit small. We'll do just a small amount of stuffing in the top of the head. Start us. And then go ahead and put this on. There we go. Perfect. There we go, there we go. All right, how great is that? Okay, so we got our, our cute little hummingbird done. He needs his little hat, but even before we need that, we need this four name suggestions. Okay. Which ones are my favorite? God, there's a lot. Wow, you guys really went ham on it. All right, so we're gonna go start a poll. What should we name our hummingbird? Huh. Ooh, that's a good name. I like that one. Oh, I like that one. God, you guys have a lot of good names. <laughs> that's a funny name. Let's do this one. Okay, I love all these names because they're really short and sweet and I like that a lot. Okay, name the burb. Uh, and while you're doing that, let's make its hat. I think we're gonna use a yellow because I think yellow is gonna look really good with this and we'll add a little bit of green on the, on the tip of it once we're done. I'm gonna go And I'm gonna start with, let's see how, we're, we're just gonna make this up as we go. I think I'm gonna go, we could either do like that and then do a green on the end or we could do a magic loop. Let's try, let's try, mm, I'm gonna try this. We're gonna try to make a slip knot. Now I'm making this up as I go, okay? So I'm, this, do not consider this a pattern. <laughs> Let's try one, two, three, four, five, eight. Yeah, like that. It's gonna go pretty big, pretty high up. Yeah, so maybe a little long, but well, that's okay. Um, and we'll go, let work into the back loop. We'll do, 
Let's do slip stitch. Single crochet. And then we'll do half double crochet all the way up. One. I don't know if this is gonna work. Two. But it might. Three. Four, and then I'll do a single at the end. One single. Okay. And then my idea is just keep doing this, do, 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 all the way around till I have enough and then sew it together and then clip the top with a green stitch. So let's try it. We'll do, and then I'll just work in the front loops. One, and then there's four half double crochets, I think. One, two, Three, do you want the fourth to be tiny though? Let's try this one, two, three, and then we'll go up. Single, no, wait, sorry, slip, stitch, single crochet. I'm making this up as I go. So if you're like, what is he making? I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea right now. We're going to figure it out though. Because here's, see, I'm thinking like it's going to go like this. Go all the way around and then hopefully it'll frill out a little bit like that. It'll have a little stem on the top. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I have a secondary idea I could do, but we'll try this first because I don't think it'll take me that long to do it. Two. Three. Was it four? So, yeah, four half double crochets. Like this. And then a single crochet. Like that. See? It's going like this is what we're trying to do. It's got a little rain hat on. I'll chain one, and then I think it's single, three half double, oh wait, back loop only, to make those ridges, and then we do single, half double, one, I think we only did three of these half double crochets, two, three, Yeah, and then a single crochet like that. I don't know if this is gonna really look like what we want it to. It, it could though. You see what I'm trying to do, like that? So it'll be like a little, we'll just keep going around. Then I'll have this little hat that he can wear. And we'll do green stitches on the end. I don't know, we'll see. One, two, and then three for the slip stitch. Slip stitch one. Oops. Then single crochet one. And then working the back loops, it's half double crochet four. One. Okay. 
two. How many petals do we want? I think six. No, I don't think, do flowers, flowers don't have six. They either have five or seven, I think. So we'll do five. One. Half. Two. Three. Oh no, that's supposed to be single. Three half doubles and then a single. Like that. Okay, that's okay. See how it kind of looks like a banana? So you can see how I was like where I got that banana idea from. It's gonna look like they have like a, a silly haircut. Maybe. Eh, it might not actually. One, two, three, and then work our way up. Slip one, and then we do single, and then back loops. Half a high jumbo, two, three, four, and then one single crochet here at the top. This might look weird, but it's worth a shot. One. Okay, we got one more pedal to do. Single. One. Two, three. Hi, Funky Smell. Let's <laughs> see, your name is so funny. <laughs> Looking forward to see what you have planned for Club Crochet this year. Me too. I have a lot planned, but I'm very excited to share it all. Very excited. Slip. There we go, single, and then half doubles up. One, two, three, four, and then a single here, like that. So that'll go like this. We're gonna sew it together here at the top. So it'll be just like this. I kind of wish it was bigger, but then yeah, we'll do a little crochet up here and then we'll do a stem and then with a little itty bitty leaf on it. Yeah, that's, no, 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 that's, <laughs> Funky Smell is not its name. Funky Smell is someone's name in the chat. <laughs> Lorianne, you're funny. Um, okay, so next it's, I guess we could crochet it together right now to save us on some. Yeah, let's do that actually. So that way we don't need to sew it together. If we go out this way. One and two, like this. We'll do single crochet and pull through the next chain. Like that. We'll do half double. Ah. that if I 
sink into this stitch. Maybe I should have just sewn it closed. One, there's our second half double crochet. Oh. There we go. I chained those really tight. One, two, we'll go three. And we need one more single crochet and then we'll be good. And we can add the top part. Do we need to do a chain? Eh, why not? Chain to close it up. Oh, you know what? Yeah, well, okay, yeah, we're gonna do it. Cut it, like that, and then we're just gonna hide this chain up the stitches all the way to the top. And then we'll crochet around the end for our last part. But there's how the hat's gonna look. That's pretty cute. I mean, yeah, that's pretty cute. Uh, but I got even a, I think I can make it even cuter. You see, it's like a little tulip or something. Or not tulip, it's like a little bell, bell flower or something. Okay. Sunshine, you finished your gnome. What is that? That's number, number five, right? You said, are you doing a gnome every single day? Or are you doing a gnome every, how, how are you doing this, Sunshine? I'm, I'm super curious. Because you said you're going to make a bunch of gnomes this year. Go, 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 there we go, jeez. Okay, how's this gonna look? Oh, that looks, actually that looks great. That's a good seam without even having to seam anything. Okay, so I think what I'll also do is I'll have these poke through the bottom and we'll double knot them. So that way we'll have like little, you know, the things that go that are on the inside of the flower. I don't know what those things are called, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so next we want to crochet around this as many times as we need. Looks like we can do one, two, three, wait, wait, one. Okay, we'll pull through right here. We need green yarn. This will work. We'll make a slip knot. And we'll pull through. Chain one. We're gonna go just around the outside, around the outside. A bunch of crochet stitches. Two. Three. Four. Five. And we're gonna decrease it down after this round, down to six. So we'll just have to make sure we have the right count. So that's five. Six. Actually, no, it might even do less than that. Seven. Eight. You know what? I kind of wish it was less crochet. I, I think I, I think I'd like this to be just a few single crochet stitches. So I actually think we're going to go, let's go two, three, four. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do these as single crochet two together instead. So one and then two decrease like that. Yeah. That'll be better. Three, four, and then like this. Yeah, because then it'll decrease it at the same time. That sounds good. One, 
Oh. There we go. Two. Two. Last one. One. Two. Boo. Okay, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. I mean, six if you count that one too. Okay, so that actually closes it in pretty good because I think what we can do is we'll put a pipe cleaner through here so it closed and then around the pipe cleaner. I don't like that stitch. That stitch is bugging me a bunch, but what are you gonna do? Um, okay, so we'll, we will, let's just go ahead and we'll just, actually we'll just cut it. We'll leave a pretty long end. We'll leave like this much, pull through that. And then we'll go, let's grab a green pipe cleaner. Oh, baby, I got one right here. We don't even need this big of one. This is like way too long of a pipe cleaner. That's even, that might be, yeah, that's probably even too much. Yeah, we just want a little one. We want like half of this. Whew, that's hurting. That, that hurts the, that hurts. Okay, we're gonna go like this, like we did with our beak, and make sure there's a hole in the end so we have something to sew around. that oh we finished our music we need to put on new music too this right and we'll go into our stitches let's put on new music though i'll just restart the playlist who cares we're almost done anyhow okay Yeah, so we'll go around the back loops of a few stitches here in the back of these, like that, and like, maybe like this. Right? Is that gonna be long enough? Yeah, that'll be long enough. And then on the inside, I'm gonna twist these pipe cleaners together. can. There we go. Open it up a little bit. Okay. And then with this tail end here, we'll go and sew it closed. Uh, also, we want this end on the inside, actually, so we can double knot it together. Boom. And okay, so we're gonna use this end to sew it closed and then wind it up the body. So we'll go around the front loops of all the stitches first to help sew it closed. One, two. It's a little messier than I want it to be, but that's, you know what? We're going from scratch, so who cares? Let's see how it looks. Four. Five. Like that. We'll pull this tight, which should close around the pipe cleaner. Yes, it, okay, it did. And then we're gonna go around the pipe cleaner up. Up the pipe cleaner. Like that. And in the pipe cleaner at the end. Oh, Jules is making food. Yes. I think she's making spaghetti. Oh, nail polish on. Well, you know what? I bet you got the cutest nails ever though, Starry. So at least there's that. Around it. And I'm gonna try to go around on my way back down this flower. I'm gonna try to go around it so that it's thicker on the bottom than it is on the top. So that way it like, you know, gets more of a flowery look. We'll see how that goes. 
cut and then pinch that closed and then we'll start to wind our way back down flower with the idea of being we want to get skinny at the top here as we go down a little bit more we want to condense it so that it gets a little bit thicker right at the base like this a couple more times All right, and then we're gonna go back into the body of, or into the thing, and then we'll double knot it to the other side. Of the green tail end right here. And almost done. Stigmatas, is that what those things are called? You come out of the center of the flower? What are those things called? Like the like the reproductive organ of the flower. You know, that that bumblebees rub themselves on. For some reason I feel like it's called the stigmata, but I, I don't know. I feel like maybe that's also wrong. Okay, cut close. Now these ends, so I kind of want these long enough. I kind of want these long enough so that they kind of poke out a little bit. So that, cause I think that sounds kind of cute. So we'll go ahead and we'll double knot, or we'll knot it like really close to the end of it. Like, stamen, there we go, the ca calyx or stamen, that's what I'm trying to think about. But yeah, we'll go like this. So there's a little knot at the end. So it doesn't come like, so it doesn't fray or anything. And we'll cut it nice and close there. I don't know if this is really gonna work the way I want it to, but it might. Uh, it's. I feel like I did that a little too short. We'll do this one a little bit longer. We can always stuff it back into the flower if we really don't like it too. Okay, here we go. Well, we want to bend this end like that that so it's kind of like a little hook and we'll put this on top of our hummingbird's head and then we'll figure out what its name was based on your vote i think we should have these the stamen stuff on the back Try to make it so it frills out a little bit more. Like this. I mean, as far as like having no idea what I was doing while I made it, that is pretty good. That is pretty good. I like that. Maybe we go a little open, a little out more like this. And there we go. What's our name of our, what's our name of our hummingbird? Kiko. Oh, I love it. Kiko. I love that name. Kiko. I don't know what it means, but I love it. Hopefully it doesn't mean anything too weird. That's so cute. Oh, I love this. What do you guys think? That's pretty cute, I think. Got a little eyelashes. Kiko, you are an adorable hummingbird. Oops. There we go. Keep your keep your little flower hat on. Oh my gosh, Kiko, you're so cute. Let's see what a Kiko looks like if with the this head and then this flower goes on that. <laughs> That's even cuter. 
Okay, we're gonna keep it on this though. Okay, that's adorable. Happy child slash blessed child. I love it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on the first live stream of the year. I would say personally, personally, success. I think that's a pretty pretty much a success for the start of the year. Look at that. Oh my God, so cute. And thank you guys so much for all your support throughout 2022. I'm so excited for this year. I'm really excited to show you what we have planned. And yeah, thank you just so much for joining and being a part of this community and being a crocheter and supporting the channel. And you just rock. Thank you so much for all your, all your help and support. Oh, it's so cute. All right, guys. Well, without further ado, I'll see you guys January 19th. Uh, that's the next live stream. Um, I do have some patterns coming out before then, but I will be live again January 19th, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on a, on that Thursday. Uh, it'll be the day after my birthday, so we'll do some kind of birthday fun thing. And yeah, regardless, happy hooking. Pasta la pizza. Thanks for joining. And no, oh my gosh. <laughs> Stop it. You hang up. Oh my God, you hang up first. No, you. Stop. Oh no, you hang up first. Oh, I wish I had a good background. I need to make a, I need to make a new background for the new year for the, when we're done with the live streams. That'd be cute. That would be cute. Ooh, I'll check out Sunshine. I'll go on Instagram to check out your gnomes. Pasta la pizza, everybody. Happy hooking. Bye.